How would you like to increase your energy levels, improve your mood, and your mental health? Are you cooking? Let's talk about it. In life, it's easy to get emotionally and physically drained. By taking a few easy steps and adding protein and fiber to each of your meals, you will be on the road to better health. If you're experiencing hunger more often, irritability, tiredness, trouble sleeping, and even concentrating, you may need to add some additional protein and fiber to your diet. You don't have to change all the food you're eating to make a difference in the way that you feel. There are several things that you can do to add to your favorite meals that will boost your intake. And today, I'm gonna to share those tips and we're gonna make a few recipes that are high in protein and fiber and they taste good too. Chicken nachos, protein pancake muffins, and noodle pasta. Let's get started. The first recipe that we're going to do is going to be chicken nachos. You're going to love this recipe. It is quick and easy to make and on the table in no time. Preheat the oven to 425 and you're going to cook these for about eight minutes until the cheese is melted and the edges are a little bit brown. I went ahead and I prepped my ingredients ahead of time. It does make putting it together easier than going and opening packages and draining olives. So you'll find that most of the time when you are making your recipes, if you prep all the ingredients ahead of time and keep them separate, your recipes will go much quicker and less likely to make mistakes. All right, what I have done is taken a half a cup of olives and I slice them. You can buy them pre-sliced in the small can, whatever way works. Um, you'll need salsa, whether it's mild, medium, or hot, that is your preference. I had a roaster chicken that I shredded the chicken breasts in it, about two chicken breasts worth, shredded that up, added the half a cup of salsa in there, and tossed it well. Um, you can use canned chicken with this recipe as well. You just want to make sure that you have about two full chicken breasts worth. Black beans is another ingredient that we're going to use. This is drained and we will use the whole can. Beans are very high in fiber and then also have about seven grams of protein. So that's a great addition if you like beans. You'll need about three cups of shredded cheese. You can either buy it pre-shredded or if you have a grater, you can grate your own. And then the most important ingredient is going to be tortillas. I use the restaurant style, the, the larger ones, not the scoops, so it'll cover the bottom of the pan and there won't be any empty spaces. What I've done first is I've done the first layer, but before I did that, I lined the pan with aluminum foil and then sprayed it with nonstick spray. That cheese can really get it stuck to the pan, so we need to take precautions. I took the tortillas and lined the bottom in one layer, just to close up any of the open spaces that are there. Then I added chicken, the shred, about half the shredded chicken. Then I added cheese, the beans, and the olives. So we're gonna do the second layer together. I usually take about uh, a handful. You don't have to do it one by one right out of the bowl. And we're going to take the tortillas and cover that entire first layer. If you want to do more than two layers, go right ahead. Just make sure you use a larger pan. But we want to just make sure that we cover that first layer. The next layer that we've added is the chicken layer. You're going to scoop the chicken on top of the nachos. Try to fill in all of your spaces and you'll use the remainder of the shredded chicken breast. You'll use half the chicken on the first layer of nachos and then use the remainder on the second. We're gonna add some cheese next and about three cups you need so you can be very generous with this as you cover this up. All right. Cheese also is a source of protein. It has about seven grams of protein. So this recipe will certainly not be lacking in the protein and fiber element. After the cheese, you can add your beans. Now, for those of you that don't like beans, you can substitute jalapeno peppers, scallions, tomatoes. I have uh, just olives and beans on mine today, and the salsa has the tomatoes in it, and that's mixed in 
to the chicken. So that is all I'm putting on mine, but feel free to get creative. And you're gonna sprinkle the beans and the olives all over the top. And your tomatoes if you have them. Like I said, you can get super creative with your nachos, whatever you like. Once you add those to the top, that's all there is. We're gonna pop this into the oven and move on to our next recipe. I'm excited to show you this recipe. This is the protein pancake muffin. I get excited when we can take an everyday item that's in our pantry and make something unique out of it. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to make these muffins, but we're going to make three different kinds at the same time. The pancake mix that you'll need is a just add water only mix. You can use a uh, name brand, off brand. You can also use a uh, pancake mix that has protein in it already. These are newer on the market. So one cup of this has 14 grams of protein, which is a great breakfast. And then the traditional pancake mix has six grams for a half a cup. So 12 grams for one cup. Either will work fine, taste difference, not much. So whatever you have will be fine. Okay, so with this recipe, we have taken two cups of the pancake mix and put it into a bowl that's large enough to be able to fold the batter. You're going to add two eggs to the mix a half a cup of sugar. This recipe will be in the description down below and also on myreachup.org, so no worries about writing it down right away. It's going to take a quarter cup of oil and add a half a cup of milk. You can use low-fat milk if you want to, 2%, your preference. Those are the ingredients for the base of the pancake mix muffins. Although I'm going to add one more ingredient to add some additional protein to it. And that is chia seeds. Chia seeds have five grams of protein for two tablespoons. They don't change the flavor of the base. So you can go ahead and add the two tablespoons. It'll add a little bit of texture in there, a little bit of variation of color in the mix. But just by adding two tablespoons of this to this base mix, I'm adding some additional protein in there, which goes to say that you can buy chia seeds and you can add this to your yogurts, to your smoothies, anything that you're making, you can add few ingredients that will help you up that protein and fiber intake. So chia seeds is what we're adding to the base of our muffins here, but you can also pick up wheat germ which you can add to any of your recipes. You can add that to your salads, your cereals. You can also purchase protein powder. Um, this could be folded in here. This is a peanut butter protein powder. I make this a lot in a smoothie, um, but you can add it to, like I said, to your yogurt, to any of your other food. And then another very popular addition for fiber and protein is gonna be flax seeds. And you can buy this ground or you can buy the seeds themselves. So adding these to your pantry to incorporate into your different meals, you are already taking care of adding this important nutrient or nutrients to your diet. All right, so uh, we're going to take a good mixing spoon or you can use a large tablespoon and you're going to incorporate the ingredients, which just means that we're going to mix it until all the flour is gone. You can fold it, which just means that you're going to wrap it around each other. Um, we're going to mix this up rather well. Make sure you scrape down the sides to get any extra flour off. And it's going to be thick. It's very thick. And you haven't done anything wrong. That's exactly the way it's supposed to be. And when this sits for a little while in the muffin pans, it actually starts to grow. Um, so we want to make sure that we don't overfill our muffin pan. All right, the next step to this recipe is going to be to prepare the pan. I used muffin cups and then I sprayed it with a nonstick spray. I also used different color muffin cups to indicate the different flavors I'm making. 
to make it interesting. You can use all the same color because you'll tell what they are um, from the food on top of them. So no need to get fancy, but if you wanna make it more interesting, you can use uh, different colors for each row. The next step is going to be to add the, the muffin mix to the pan. We're going to add the muffin mix in there and then we have all of these little additions that we're going to add to the top and use a toothpick to incorporate them. So the muffins that we're gonna make today is going to be a peanut butter banana chocolate chip muffin, a maple brown sugar muffin, and a blueberry almond muffin. You can easily take a spoon and add the muffin mix to the muffin pan and use your finger. Sometimes it gets a little bit sloppy, but it does work. I have a trick of the trade for you. If you have a drinking glass, any size drinking glass, and a large Ziploc bag, you're going to take a scissor and cut off the corner, open the bag, and put it into the drinking cup, and fold the bag over the outside. Then, we will take our spoon and fill the Ziploc bag about halfway full with the pancake mix. This is going to save you a little bit of time and mess. We're going to pull up the bag, take it out of the glass, and just cinch it with your hand, find your corner that you cut off, and we're going to add it to the pan by squeezing. You'll need two hands, and you're going to fill it about halfway. So twist, twist, and fill the muffin wrapper about halfway. And we're gonna put this in here. Now that all the muffin papers are filled, just about halfway, it, we're ready to add the ingredients. We're going to do it by row. So the first thing that you're gonna need is a toothpick, but if you don't have one, a back of a spoon works really well. So on the first row, I'm going to make a blueberry almond filling and topping. And I've got some chopped almonds, uh, and I'm just going to add a couple almonds to the top of each. Don't use them all, use about half. And then I'm going to take some blueberries and just put a small scoop onto each. Then I'm gonna take my toothpick or the back of a spoon and just fold it in. Just ever so lightly, just turn it to keep it in the paper. You can use your other hand to hold the paper in there, but just lightly fold in those ingredients. It's a small muffin, so there are you're bound to get a blueberry and an almond with every bite. Once you've incorporated it that way, you're gonna take the rest of the almonds and just add a couple to the top of each and the same thing with your blueberries. We're just going to drop a couple on top, one so we know what they are after they're done cooking, and then also to add some additional flavor. All right. The next row, we're going to make a maple brown sugar muffin. And all I'm using here is the Quaker maple brown sugar oatmeal. And I'm going to just sprinkle about just enough to cover the top. And then take my toothpick and fold that in. And we'll do the same thing with the last row, which is going to be a peanut butter banana chocolate chip. But you can do any version of flavor for your muffins. You can just do chocolate chip, you can do chocolate chip and sprinkles, strawberries. Use your imagination. It's, cooking is supposed to be fun. I've taken some peanut butter and put it in the microwave to soften it a little bit so it's easier to fold into the muffin. And so this one, we're gonna add a little dollop, just a little teaspoon of peanut butter. 
That one had a little bit too much. Can't say it's a bad thing. Measuring, measuring is really not that important. So there's the peanut butter. And I'm going to add just a couple of chocolate chips that go into the center. And then I'm going to add a few chopped bananas. I would say about a half a teaspoon would be good. If you add more than a half a teaspoon, the muffins will sink and they'll come out a little bit soggy. So you don't want to add too much. I know it's tempting, but you will taste it. All right, and then for this one, I'll use the, the back of a spoon. And the peanut butter is a little bit challenging to mix in there, so I'm just the back of the, the bottom of the spoon does work well for this one. And I'm just going to fold it in until I can get all those ingredients into the batter. I don't generally like doing dishes that much. I could have separated this batter into three different bowls and added the ingredients in and then added them to the muffin cups but this doesn't really take that long and it keeps me from doing more dishes. All right, then we're gonna to add to the top just the chocolate chips because the bananas, I don't want them on top because they'll make it sink and the peanut butter will do that also. So just enough to make it look decorative. I'm um, going back to the maple brown sugar. There is brown sugar inside the, um, inside the oatmeal packet um, because it's all folded in, but I find that there's not enough. So I'm gonna go back and put some of the brown sugar mixture on top, and then I also have some brown sugar to add a little bit of sweetness. This one will be the, the driest of all the muffins. Um, it's not dry that you can't eat it, but the others with the fruit in them will be a little bit more moist. You can, um, add chopped apple into that if you wanted to add a little moisture, but I found they came out great and I liked it, a little bit of butter on it. It was wonderful. All right, so here is your pancake batter muffins. We'll put it into a 350 degree oven for about 12 minutes. You're gonna wanna keep your eye on these. They're not supposed to get golden brown like cupcakes. They stay on the lighter side. Our last recipe is going to be a noodle salad. This is made with a whole grain pasta. You can use traditional pasta, but I like to add some additional fiber to my diet, so this is a great way to do it, to make this small change makes all the difference. It also calls for a protein. You can either use chicken, you can use tuna fish, you can use tofu, whatever your preference is. So today I use tuna fish. I took two cans of tuna, drained it, and then shred it with a fork. I cooked the pasta, cooled it, and now I'm going to add the tuna fish to the pasta. This recipe only has a few ingredients and you can serve it hot or cold. Uh, the next ingredient we're going to add is going to be mayonnaise. You can use an avocado mayonnaise, you can use a low fat, a light. Um, I generally take about two tablespoons, maybe two and a half. I would rather add just a little bit and then add more as I need it. And then the last ingredient is gonna be salt and pepper. So you're going to take a large spoon and toss the tuna fish or chicken with the mayonnaise until it's to your liking. Like I said, you don't wanna make it too mushy, so start with about two and a half tablespoons of mayo just to coat all the pasta it seems like i need a little bit more but like i said it just is your preference now this pasta is excellent chilled for barbecues um, for a light cool meal or i have people that like it warmed up and this is the main course i sometimes serve it as a main course sometimes as a side we're going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to it. If you want to give it a little bit of a zing and some more flavor, McCormick makes these Grillmate flavor packets, and this one happens to be a honey sriracha, and you can just 
very carefully, sprinkle some on, mix it in, and then give it a taste to make sure it's not overwhelming. But these Grillmate barbecue packets call to add water, to marinate meats in. I tend to find that they're great flavor enhancers. So go ahead and mix that together. And then once it is all mixed in, I will put some saran wrap on it and then put it in the refrigerator. This is such a great quick meal. Um, it is a people pleaser because it's simple. It doesn't have a lot of ingredients to it. All right, so that is our noodle pasta salad. We've added a link to our website in the description below where you can access a list of foods rich in protein and fiber. And you can add those to your next grocery list. We've also included some information on the health benefits. Let me add, one of the additional ways to feel better would be to check out our YouTube channel, Are You Getting Fit? on Reach Up TV. Watch our very own Coach Ginny help you with simple 10 to 15 minute workouts. In season one, episode six, she discusses the importance of adding proteins to your diet to help power your body, especially after a workout. It's worth watching. Taking steps to add protein and fiber to your diet will improve your concentration, lower your anxiety, boost your energy, and keep you feeling good. It's important to be sure we're taking care of our body and our minds. Are you cooking? Let's do this thing.